chosen a rather jungly story to share. The title is The Jungle Job Centre. If you have this book at home, you can read along with me. The author, the person who has written this story is Aaron Vaughan and the illustrator, the person who has drawn all the pictures is James Wilkinson. Now, in this story, you're going to meet four friends who for the first time are going to the Jungle Job Centre. I wonder what jobs they will be given and if they are right for those jobs. Shall we read and find out? The Jungle Job Centre. <coughs> you might think, ordinarily, that the jungle is a very noisy place to be. Ordinarily, you'd be right. From the scuttling and scratching of the tiniest ant to the great trumpeting tune of the largest elephant, the jungle is alive with noise. However, every Monday morning at the start of every brand new week, this particular corner of the jungle goes very, very quiet indeed. For in this corner of the jungle sits a very important person at a very important desk. In this corner of the jungle sits Mrs Utanga the orangutan and Mrs Utanga the orangutan is in charge of the jungle job centre. It may come as a surprise to hear that the jungle does not thrive by itself. It takes a lot of hard work. A lot of different animals do the jobs that need to be done to keep the jungle running smoothly, which is why every Monday morning at the Jungle Job Centre you will find a long line of animals waiting at the desk of Mrs Utanga, waiting to be given their jungle jobs. Now, at the start of this particular week, near the back of this long line were four friends about to receive their first ever jungle jobs. Needless to say, they were all a little bit nervous. After all, jungle jobs were very, very important. Buddy the tiger, Sully the cookery snake, Indar the slow loris and Dewey the drongo all stood in line waiting patiently. At the front, of this long jungle line stood the oldest, wisest and most experienced of all the jungle's animals. The giant rhinoceros with his almighty horns. The nimble dapple mouse deer, small and sleek, whose wonderful snuffly nose always knew where to find the best jungle food. The humongous Sumatran elephant and the old and wise pangolin who have lived almost as long as the jungle itself. Time passed slowly as Mrs Utanga worked her way through the line and her list and gave every animal their own jungle job. Finally, by the time the sun had reached the middle of the sky, the line had almost reached its end. Buddy the tiger, 
loud and brave and bold, stepped up to Mrs. Utanga's large desk. Ah, little tiger, said Mrs. Utanga, peering over her glasses. Let me see. She checked her long list. The tapir at the watering hole must be clean. They cannot reach their backs. Please don't disturb their sleep. They get very grouchy. Sounds easy, shouted Buddy. And off he ran into the jungle towards the watering hole. Sully, you are next declared Mrs. Utanga, beckoning the snake over. Sully slithered up to the desk. He did not feel loud nor brave. Sully, perhaps you could go to the coffee bean trees and help pick the berries. Sully looked sullen. He shrugged a slow, snaky shrug and headed off. Inda, hurry up here, girl. Inda hurried, quite slowly, to the desk. Mrs. Utanga thought carefully. We will have you try fixing nests. Many jungle birds and primates call the trees home. Inda stood still eyes wide. Girl! Ever so slowly and ever so carefully, Inda headed off. That leaves you, Dewey the Drongo. Dewey smiled and hopped up to the desk, her racket tail swishing behind her. You are a bird. Dewey looked down. She was indeed a bird. You understand, birds. We need to keep the squawky birds away from the groundnut plant. They peck and peck and ruin the crops. Yes, Mrs. Utanga, replied Dewey politely, and off she flew. Now, the watering hole was not too far from the jungle job centre, so Buddy the tiger was first to arrive for his jungle job. Sure enough, three large and very, very muddy tapir dozed and snoozed close to the bank. Buddy smiled. This will be easy! Plucking the most brush-like branch from the most brush-like bush he could find, Buddy leapt into the water. Buddy paddled and pulled his way noisily over to where the tapir wallowed. Buddy finally reached the first tapir and without thinking too long about it, took hold of the tapir's tail and began to climb. Now, I'm not sure about you, but hanging from the tail of a rudely awoken tapir is not somewhere I'd like to find myself. Hog! The tapir thrashed and splashed and crashed their way out of the watering hole and back into the jungle, just as dirty and much more angry than they were before. Oh, you silly tapir, shouted Buddy. This was a silly job anyway. Somewhere in the south of the jungle, Dewey swooped into the groundnut fields and landed softly. She spotted the naughty, squawky birds pecking and clawing at the crops. Excuse me, 
she said. Would you mind not doing that? You see, the farmers are very squawk, pet, pet, squawk, pet, squawk. Sorry, excuse me. These crops are actually important to the other animals that rely on them for food. Dewey frowned. Aren't you listening? This is not your food. You need to find something else. Dewey had never felt quite so frustrated. She slapped her wing against the ground. I can't do this job, she said sadly. Sonny took his time to slither and slide his way to the coffee plantations on the far side of the jungle. He saw the bright, ripe red berries hanging in bunches from the trees. Sully curled and coiled his way up and along the tree branch until he was hanging next to the berries. Sully wrapped his long snaky body around the branch and shook gently, but that didn't work. Sully tried using the end of his tail to flick the berries from the branch. That didn't work. So Sully tried to carefully squeeze the bunch of berries into the basket. That didn't work either. Sully wondered why everything was going so wrong. He shrugged a snaky shrug and slowly slithered away. Inda was, of course, the last to arrive for her jungle job. Staring up into the canopy, she saw three nests that needed to be mended. Not wanting to waste any more time, Inda began the long climb to the top. She had almost made it halfway when she started to feel very sleepy. Maybe just a little nap to give me more energy, she thought. So Inda napped and napped and napped and napped and napped and napped and napped. Soon it wasn't morning anymore. At long last in the late afternoon, Inda woke. Remembering her important task, she finally finished the climb to the treetop. Taking a reed in one hand, she prepared to weave the first nest. Bring! The jungle bell rang out to signal the end of the day and call the jungle animals home. Oh, Inda, ever so slowly, and ever so carefully climbed down from the tree and headed back through the jungle. Buddy tried jungle babysitting, but his roar was too loud for that. He tried cracking nuts, but his jaws were too powerful for that. He even tried working in the jungle spa, but his claws were too sharp for that. Dewey tried digging water trails through the jungle, but she wasn't fast enough for that. She tried seed spreading to grow new crops, but she was much too hungry for that. She even tried tidying the dead leaves on the jungle floor, 
but her wings were much too flappy for that. Sunny tried tying knots in vines to help the monkeys swing in the trees, but he looked a little too much like a vine for that. He tried helping out with the jungle fire service, but he looked a little too much like a hose for that. He even tried to referee a game of jungle hockey, but he looked a little too much like a stick for that. Indar tried beekeeping but she was scared of bees. She tried weaving webs to make homes for creepy crawlies, but she was scared of spiders. She even tried cleaning out caves to help make homes for the bats, but she was scared of bats. After all this, the jungle sun was getting very low and all of the other animals had finished their jungle jobs for the day. The four friends trudged back to Mrs Utanga's desk. Buddy did not feel as brave or bold as he did before. Sully was sullen. Dewey looked down at the ground and Indar's wide eyes looked ready to cry. Mrs Utanga simply smiled. Buddy, you may be small compared to the older animals, but you are fierce with a roar that can shake the entire jungle. Your confidence is a great tool, but you must use it in the right places. Dewey, you are a natural leader. Your size does not prevent you from making the right decisions. You may not be loud, little bird, but your voice will still be heard. Indar, you remarkable girl, you may not be the fastest nor the bravest, but you pay such great attention to your tasks. You are very careful and you have a great respect for the jungle. Sully, I have been the most impressed by you. You found things a little difficult because you are having so many thoughts at once. You worry it makes you different to your friends somehow. Well, every one of us is different. We are each on our own path, but we are all the same in our hearts. We all care about our home and our families. That is why the Jungle Job Centre is so important to help protect the rainforest. So then the four friends smiled for the first time in a while. They looked at each other and thought hard about all the jobs they had tried. Perhaps a job that one of them had struggled at would be perfect for someone else. I wonder, Mrs Utanga checked her list of jobs and looked at the group of animals in front of her. She smiled a great big smile. Tomorrow we will try something new. When morning came, 
The animals headed straight for the jungle job centre once more. Only this time, a little less nervous than they had been before. Mrs Utanga met them with her list and said, I think I know the jobs that would be perfect for you. And so it turned out. Buddy the tiger, with his fearsome roar, was the perfect bird scarer to keep the naughty squawky birds away from the groundnut crops. And as it turned out, Dewey the Drongo was the perfect bird to weave and thread reeds and branches and leaves into nests for all kinds of jungle animals. And so it turned out, Sully the snake, silent and stealthy, was the perfect choice to give the slumbering tapirs a peaceful polish without disturbing their sleep. And as it turned out, Indar the slow loris was perfectly suited to picking coffee berries. Her slow and cautious nature, helping her gently pluck large red bunches from the trees. So now, every Monday morning, at the front of that long jungle line, you will find four best friends eagerly waiting for their next jungle jobs. A little tiger, a thoughtful snake, a determined drongo, and a timid slow loris. Though they might not be the largest, nor the strongest, the bravest, nor the fastest, they all know that if they keep trying hard, they will find their own path. And finding your own path, said Mrs Utanga, is what the Jungle Job Centre is all about. Oh, what a wonderful story that was. I didn't know there were so many different jobs to do in a Sumatran rainforest. Thank goodness for Mrs Utanga. She was able to match the jobs perfectly with the animals. And the four friends realised that they were all good at different things. They all had different strengths. Just as Mrs Utanga said, we all find our own path to follow. Now there's something very special about this book. It's been printed on stone paper and it proudly supports the Sumatran Orangutan Society. I hope you've enjoyed today's Shed Time story and if you want to, you can like, share, follow and subscribe to Shed Time Stories and then you will be ready for the next book for us to share together. Bye bye! Yeah.